With one of the closest MVP races to date, the battle of Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic gets more interesting every day. The third year in a row at this big men battle for the award, Embiid wants to secure the title this time, while Jokic is looking to get his third. Along with Giannis knocking on the door, the 2023 MVP will be one for the ages. Up for the layup! Oh, blocked by James! Box! Back out to Allen! His three-pointer! Bang! He's a curry! Way down to Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! Yo, what's going on guys? So today, I'm going to talk a little bit about the MVP race, uh, give a little bit of our thoughts. We made a video about this way early into our channel, but obviously a lot of change since then. That was made like around November, December. And now we're like almost at the end of the season, which is pretty crazy. It's been a very fun season. And the MVP race has been one of the biggest you know, talks recently, especially because uh, the main two candidates are the two base, best big men in the NBA. This MVP race is so interesting just because like Yogesh can possibly win his third. And then Embiid can finally win his first. And I feel like, I don't think this, this this battle will be as bad, maybe, if Joel was able to get, like, all NBA first team. I feel like that's really been, that's really been like, cap because you're the number two in MVP voting, but you're all NBA second team. And I think that really sucks. Yeah, but, I think so many should be done about that. But I, I said it looks better. for, like, career yeah. stats, you know, look, nobody's going to think, oh, it's because Joel is just going to look at all NBA second team. Yeah. And that's a big difference. All NBA first or second. No, because all NBA first means that you were like pretty much one of the best in the top five, five best players, players yeah. in the NBA. But sadly, because of precision <clears throat> and everything, that hasn't always been the case. And it, that, that's what's going to happen this season, most likely. For most of the year, I honestly thought that Jokic had secured the MVP going for his third. It's funny because, like, in the beginning of the season, like, oh, before the season started, I would have never thought that they were actually going to give it to him. They never give it to somebody uh, three times in a row. It's only been done, like, I think, three times. So I, I was curious though. Like I felt, I honestly thought if someone could do it was Jokic, just because the way that he won it last year was like as a lower seed. I feel like if he secured the first seed this year, then they might be able to give it to him. And he, he was winning for a long time, in my opinion. But then obviously, what, what like I guess like what messed him up was was that losing streak that they had to like some bad teams like the Nuggets. And then Embiid was just playing incredible. Nah, but I think recently the Nuggets have been able to pick it up, yeah. and now his Sixers have lost a few games recently. And yesterday, no. Yeah, let's talk about this. We're, we're talking about this because um, it's fresh in our minds that the Nuggets and the Sixers are going to play in Denver. And I saw it on Instagram and Ali was telling me that historically, Embiid has not played good there. He has always just been outshined by Jokic when they play. Because, I mean, a lot of people struggle in Denver because of the altitude and just a different environment for them. And it's mad at me just didn't play. And there was no really, there was no really explanation for it. I think and there people, he was coming off of back to me. Back to back, I uh, think people were like, "Oh, you're, you're talking yeah. Jokic because you don't want to play bad." A lot of people said that. And uh, so another point that I saw is that Embiid has been like trying really, really hard to play good recently to get MVP, yeah. and it seems like Jokic is just playing. Jokic should be playing basketball. That's why I don't like when people call him a stat pattern because I, I really think that Jokic just be like one person calling him. Like that's that. No, no, me, I mean, no. Okay, one person in the media, but like fans and stuff. You think so? A lot of people have been calling him a stat pattern. Jokic? Yeah, bro. That's. Bro, don't tweak like that. Like, if you think Jokic is a stat, bro, out of everybody in the NBA, the least stat patter ever is like Nikola Jokic, bro. This yeah. dude does not even care about the MVP. Like, I I'm telling you right now, this dude does not care if he wins. It. The thing that pisses me off about Joel, like keeping it a thousand, is that I feel like it's cool that you want it, but you're trying so hard, bro, and you're like taking shots at, at Jokic too. He's like, dude, I don't know if you heard this, but he said this, this is like a quote by him. He goes, oh, I don't know. He's like. Oh, I've never made I've never made All NBA first team. So why should, why do people have the same expectations of me than, than other people who have won MVPs and stuff? It's like, bro, you're still a good player. <laughs> like this dude thinks that just because he's never he's never he's like, oh, I've never won the MVP. So why do people have have expectations for me? Bro, you know how stupid right, you sound, bro. You playing. win one MVP. You like one person wins one MVP. Just Kawhi has never won an MVP. He has he's had expectations like since he got to LA to win a championship. This man has never even been part of the MVP discussion guy until like, um, unless it was like 2017 or something. Um, sometimes he can be a bit unlikable, but I think he says. And this isn't that crazy of a comment, but Demar Green was talking about the fact that MB MB was like told him, "Oh, I had to go out today because he said that it was harder guarding Jokic." So I just always had MB cares a lot more than Jokic. And I think at this point, Jokic is gonna end up getting it. You think so? Yeah, I think recently, I'm telling you, recently the Nuggets have been winning again, and Jokic has been. So consistent because even when they were losing, he was still playing great. He was yeah. still getting triple doubles. He's shooting like 60 something percent from the field, averaging 25 points per game. And I know we have, we have kind of been desensitized to 
the triple double, but that's insane, bro. Ten assists from a center, that's crazy. That's crazy, bro. But we should not overlook that. Well, this man is crazy. And the Nuggets have been the number one seed in, in the West. A West that has been super competitive. They have been number one, like, shilling. Like, they, there's never been a moment that they have really been in danger of losing it, which is very impressive, even not to the losing streak they had. So, and I think team wise, I think if we're looking at the MVP as the most valuable player to their team, I think it's, I think what Jogic means to this, to this net, uh, Denver Nuggets offense is everything. He's the main facilitator. He's the guy that gets everybody else involved. He is literally their offense. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm not saying to Joel, Joel isn't, but I think if you take Joel off the Sixers, I think they're still actually a pretty good team. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but what do you think about that? Uh, let's say you give him an okay center. You take out a, a Joel from the Sixers. Don't you think they're okay? I think they're okay because obviously they have James Harden, which isn't crazy, but he's still um, a borderline all star. Obviously, you have to buy Sirius, Tyrese Maxi. Maxi. You know, a lot of good role players. Uh, obviously, the team where both are going to be there, and it's not there. It doesn't work the same way. But I think they'll still be solid. So I, I'm going to have to agree with that. But I think what about Jokic, the Denver Nuggets, like, die. The Nuggets, like, die. I think so. I think the so. Matter, that they would have made the playoffs. So they would just fall completely. So I agree with you on that. And I guess let's also talk about the third person that's in the yeah. P race. Not as much. And the only reason that I think Giannis, that's the person I'm talking about, is not in the MVP race is because he's with injured for a long time, which is the, I think there's one of the times where I've seen him miss the most games in the season. Yeah. And and when he, when he was out, the Bucks were still winning. And Joe Holiday has had an incredible season. Brooke Lopez has played amazing. So I think that team has played too good with Adam for you to like give it to him. Especially, you know, people don't like to... Uh, Give MVP to the same person. I know it's gonna happen with Jokic. Yeah, but we we talked about that. I think with Jokic, it's, it's kind of different because with with I just feel like Jokic is not in the same level as Gian, of Giannis. Bro, Giannis to me is an all time player. Ah, already, bro. Yeah, already. Yeah. Keeping it a thousand. I'm not saying Jokic isn't. Like Jokic is probably a top ten center of all time. But I think with Giannis, like bro, Giannis is literally like he's won MVP. He's won two MVPs. He was one of the defensive player of the year. He's won an, he's won a championship. He's NBA been all MVP. MVP, everything. Like this dude is a like a super hall of fame and he's super young and i think with him he's the best player in the nba so i to be honest i just think they take him for granted i think with Jokic, i don't think it's like that i think and and analytically Jokic is like insane and i think a lot of people also like they get turned off by analytics but i think you gotta do it you gotta see a combination of things you can see like analytically he's great but then you see him in real like you see you watch and the it's game. impressive it's impressive i watched him play and he was playing the game so easy so the passes, the rebounds, the scoring, like it's effortless for him. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best of the sport. My only negative on MB, uh, excuse me, on Jokic, and we talked about it, I, he just lacks aggressiveness. But I just think that he plays the right way in the sense that, like, he was never taught um, to be to be like, oh, you got to score, you got to take over. He's never been like that. And I and so that's something that Joel has that I really like about him, that he's been able to close, he's been able to take over games. And, yes, um, Jokic has hit clutch shots, this, this, and that. But I feel like he doesn't have the – he's never, like – Oh, I'm going to take over the game. And this is like a negative that we see with pa passive players such as LeBron James. But I think Jokic takes it to an even an even deeper level. Because to me, Jokic is 1,000% their point guard. Yeah. And talking a bit about the playoffs, um, with that point that you made, I, I was telling Ali, obviously Jokic is great. I'm not going to take anything away from him. But I don't think that's a player that, that you're going up against in the playoffs and you're like, oh my goodness. I don't think people necessarily fear him. Because of his play style. I think... I think it's kind of, again, going back to the whole, his play style and everything. That's why a lot of people say that they don't fear LeBron. Even Gilbert Arenas, a big LeBron dig writer, he always says, a guy like that, I don't fear because when he scores or when he passes, you don't notice. Like, their team could be up by a 1,000, and then he could have 40 points, 20 rebounds, 10 assists, but you don't notice that. And it's kind of like the same thing with Jokic because he's not the type of guy like Michael Jordan that's like going after you, going after yeah. you, going after you. And so I can see why people are necessary. I would say too. somebody like James Harden and the Rockets, bro, that man will score and you will notice. Like it yeah. will it will wear you down the way he will score, getting those fouls and everything. And like you'll be like, damn, like that's Yeah, it's like we can't stop. Like LeBron, know. like LeBron James and, and Harden have the same amount of points, but you felt those Harden points more. I'm not saying that LeBron James points were like less volleyball or anything, but watching the game you can't yeah. feel them less. So yeah, um, final prediction. I do we I think we both we both agree that Yogi is gonna end up winning it. Thanks. So. And it's gonna be historic. Um, the last person that did it was Larry Bird. Yep. So it's going to be... And it's kind of funny because obviously they're different players, but in a way they're a bit similar. Yeah, they're, they're both slow. Yeah. They're both great passers. Obviously, they're both white. Just keep yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't mind it because Joke is a good person. He hasn't... It's not It's not like he went out of his way super hard to do it. He just kind of did it by playing the right way. 
So shout out to Jokic. Yes, Embiid, I'm to sorry. Uh, you're going to miss it once again. Um, Rusty Buggers better. And Betty was talking about how like, it's so looked down upon to be the second best. And that happened to KD with LeBron. And now it's kind of happened to, to Embiid with Jokic. Or oh, being number two is like still it's, amazing. It's funny because I think with Jokic and Embiid, I think they're super even. Like a lot of people, even I, they don't care who won the MVP. Like a lot of people still believe that Jokic is better. I mean, yeah, excuse a lot me, of Embiid, is Embiid is better. Yeah. So I guess for Embiid, yeah, I just don't like the petty comments. I don't like him taking shots at at um at Jokic, especially since they actually care about each other. They're actually good friends. And uh, the Draymond Green podcast last year, uh, right before Jokic won his second MVP, Embiid was saying that as long as the center wins it, he's happy. So yeah. it's like coming back now and looking petty, making these petty comments, not mentioning people by name. Like, that makes you look bad. But let's say this, man. Embiid, if you want to prove that you're better, you got the playoffs right there, man. Yep. If you have a good team, um, your your team is as good as any other team in the East besides... What are you? going to say that Southern no. Bucks are a little bit ahead uh, of them? Not even, bro. You can honestly say this is the best, arguably the best team in the NBA. Like, I, I have no... Re the reason that we don't think so is because of, uh, we've seen Embiid in the playoffs. He he does he plays bad in the fourth quarters. He's injured. And also Jim Harden. Hard in. Trust him as much. Exactly. Even the other players on his team, like Tobias Harris, we've seen him be ass in the playoffs <laughs> when like Ben Simmons went down, yeah. we needed him to step up. Smack could not hit anything. Well, there's a good point that he that he was shooting eleven percent from three. Like, I remember that. Who? I got oh, Tobias, yeah, Tobias Harris. Yeah, you remember against yeah, yeah. the Boston Celtics when yeah. when when Simmons went down, we're like, damn, this dude is short line on Ben Simmons. Like, is this, this is serious? <laughs> but yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And peace out.